Hi everyone, welcome to Zenscape where we experience the divine through aqua design. My name is Sean and today as part of our Women in Aquascaping series, we are going to be interviewing Jesslyn about her journey, her challenges, her influences and also be geeking out about her aquascapes as well. Hi Jesslyn, thanks so much for making time for us today. No problem Sean, nice to have you here as well. Um, maybe the first thing is, um, maybe you can share a bit about your background. Um, how did you get into aquascaping? When was it? Um, yeah, and, and what actually even brought you here to this hobby? Okay, uh, a, a bit of a long story. Mm. I started fish keeping during COVID 2020. Mm, mm. Uh, can't travel, so we took out the fish hobby. I mm. uh, was reading up on aquascaping through online and YouTube, but it looks complicated and it looks expensive, so I didn't go into it. Until January 2023 this year, I attended a course in Neon Poly, which is called Bus Business. Uh, business of fish keeping and mm. aquascaping. Mm -hmm. And from that course, it actually told, showed me that it's not as difficult as I thought. So mm. I decided to take out the courage and uh, expand a bit after that course. So mm. from, from that course, we got a free tank. So we actually play with it. And then when I came back, I decided to get a few more tanks and <laughs> make my fish a bit happier. And it also you know, it brightened up the place also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. that's how it started. I see, I see. Uh, decided to get a few more tanks. That's the that's the line we hear a lot, right? Usually. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just start right then after that it starts. Yeah, the, to get the addition become is, is strong actually when yeah. you started something and then it gets into the interest and you get yeah. immersed in it. Then you start thinking about okay, what can I do next? Yes, next yes. I get another tank so you can do it a bit different. Yeah. So that's how you see now I actually got four tanks here. Mm -hmm. uh, some are planted and some are still not not really fully planted yet. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's like you want to try different things, try different Scapes or different livestock. Yeah, uh, true. Yeah, things like that. Okay, uh, what are some of the your your greatest joy when it comes to aquascaping? Like, what actually keeps you going and makes you continue doing it? I think the most important thing is when you see the plant is growing, you see the colors of the plant, mm. and that's what keep me growing. Because uh, honestly, I don't have green fingers. Mm. When it comes to plants, to me. Uh, plastic plants are the best. You don't need to water, you need to take care of it, just put it there. That's why in, Extreme in, low maintenance. Yeah, and in my place here, you can see a lot of fake plants around. Because mm. you, you know, it beautifies the place a bit mm. and then you don't have to take care of them. So when I first tried this aquascaping and you start seeing the plant grow, especially with the CO2 system, mm. it really makes a big difference. Mm. And you start seeing, and I, every week I got to trim them because it really grows very fast. Mm. And you know, it started with a small portion and now I got to trim and I start having all these portions get it. Occup yeah. occupying all the tanks already. Yeah, so, especially for the stem plants. Yeah, so it, yeah. it really makes you feel that yeah, this is something very interesting because it's a life thing. Mm, so mm. You know, you, then you get more and more into it. So like you said, then you start thinking about what other skips you can try because there is mm. so many different types of skips in the uh, scaping world. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I think the beauty about living things or, you know, rather than fake plants, right, is that you, it's always evolving, it's always changing. True, true. Every, few days you come back and look at it, it looks slightly different than yeah, it was. Right? Like, like they, I never expect these plants to grow a bit on the slant side and mm. it does. So like, I decided to keep it there. Yeah. It, I should cut it but I realised I like the angle of how it's growing. Mm. So I decided to leave it there. So that is why, like you said, you, know, you don't know how they're actually going to develop or evolve. Mm. And by seeing it day after day or week after week, that's the joy of it. It's like keeping fish is the same thing. Mm. You know, I have fish that that's now grown like more than 30 cm long and mm -hmm. still keep us going because they actually recognize you as an owner. Mm -hmm. So plants, they wound, but of course then you keep with the fish and you see the fish being happy mm -hmm. and it makes you feel happy also. Then I tell everyone that who came through here, they came in, you see why you keep so many things? They well brighten up the place and you see something live, right? I mean, rather than dead things in the office. So yeah, yeah. yeah. so to me, it's, uh, you know, it's just a, you spend so many hours in the office, mm -hmm. you just want to see something that's lively also. That's true. Yeah. yeah, like sometimes uh, you can sort of predict how things go, but you can't predict fully also, right? Yeah, you, you, you can do what you can to, you know, follow the right fertilization uh, regime, you know, water parameters, everything light, everything good. Mm -hmm. But sometimes things may not always 100% turn out exactly as you predict, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, Which is also the beauty of it, right? Yeah, they are life things, you know, like yeah. us, you know, every one of us have our own personality and characteristics. Yes. So it's the same for every tank. You know, even I got four tanks running on the same CO2 system, but they turn out very differently. So mm. you know, it's like, you really need to get to understand the tank. And of course, the next step for me is the trying to get it balanced out. Mm, because mm, I mm. think that's the challenge for everyone in the mm, aquascaping mm, mm, world. Yeah. yeah. And are there any um, 
any other challenges that you have, uh, especially, I mean, with regards to upscaping, of course, but also the fact that uh, you're a woman in a more male-dominated field, is that, uh, does that make a difference at all for you? I think for us, it's mainly like, since it's the, this is a hobby, so I, we don't go into competition and things like that. So you, you are not really exposed to the world of the aquascaping world because you don't meet the other people mm. who are doing the same thing. Mm. Of course, now with technology, you got social media, you got Facebook, you got Telegram, you join a group of like-minded people mm. and then they help each other. Of course, you got problems, you, you post it, mm. they may know what's going on, then they give you advice. For me, you know, either I go to the course trainer from Neon Poly mm. or I go to the fish shop that I always frequent. I show him pictures and ask him, what is this? What should I do? And mm. he'll teach me. Mm. So mm. it's a kind of learning, learning stage where you learn new things every day. It's like last time in my job where I always say, even after 10 years in the job, in the same industry, there's still a lot of things for us to learn because mm -hmm. technology is still evolving. So there's no way that you say you have learned everything. Mm, so mm, I believe mm. it's, it's the same for everything, the fish yeah. keeping or even the aquascaping. Mm, so mm. like now for me, the challenge now is the tank has been planted, mm -hmm. the plants are growing. Of course, the next stage is, I think that's what everyone faces is algae issue. Mm. So now I got algae issue in the tank. So now, now my next challenge is how am I going to get rid of the algae and how to make sure that it doesn't come back again. So I think once I can mm. conquer that challenge, then my tank should be more or less working by itself and I don't really have to take care of it anymore other than trimming the plants. Mm, so I'm looking mm. forward to that stage right. where it's like just trimming. Yeah, just it's once good. it's balanced, then the next stage is just trimming it, top up mm. water, things like that. And you don't really have to take care of them. The fish and the plant will, will sort of interact mm, by itself mm. and make it a balanced ecosystem. Mm, mm. That's true, that's true. Wow, maybe we can talk a bit about, about your, your tank right here that we're looking at. Um, maybe some background, like do you have an idea of uh, what you wanted to do, like your concept before scaping it, or was it more like when you scaped it, let's just see how, how things go? Uh, it's more like while I was doing the scaping, then the ideas came to me. So mm. what I, I first started with, okay, I still wanted the slope, so I did the slope. Mm. Then I put the rock on one side and the driftwood on the other side. Then, mm. then I started thinking, okay, what am I going to put? What kind of plants to put? So, okay, from the course, we learned that tall stem plants will all go to the back. So mm. I put some tall stem plants at the back. But then when I went to the fish shop, I saw this uh, red <laughs> kabumba and I really love it. It's, the color was so nice over at the, at the shop there. Mm. So I decided to get one stock. I came back and they told me, if you, your system is running well, it will actually grow very fast. You mm. will just mm. keep on cutting the stem and it just grow by itself. Mm. So I took the advice, I bought one stock. So all this came from just one stock only. Mm. So it really grows and I like the color. So I decided to move it to the front, which mm. I shouldn't because it's supposed to be a stem plant right at the back or at mid, mid ground. Mm. But I decided to put it in the front. So the, my challenge now is every week, I make sure I need to trim. Yeah, yeah because if <laughs> right. not, if they go through too tall then it looks weird against mm, the, mm. the stem plant at the back so mm, but some mm. of them I like it I like the slant and all this, so I decided to leave it but like this more or less I actually need to trim them to make them a bit lower so they don't cover the back mm, mm. and then recently I got the they call it the red tiger lotus lily mm. I wanted to try and see how it looks like when it grow, when it's fully grown and the leaf is floating on the water surface mm -hmm. and then the stalk still growing above the water surface. Mm. So I'm looking forward to that, this plant growing to that stage. Mm. And, and maybe hopefully flowering as yeah, well. Definitely. If, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's talk about the other plants that, that you have here. Um, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about these, these ones in the back? Uh, okay, to be yeah. honest, I don't even know what is this called. This, mm. this plant actually came from the course that I attended. Okay, so I okay. just planted a few stock here mm. and same thing they just keep on growing so I just keep on trimming and then it just keep on growing more and more and it gets a bit of a big cluster already mm -hmm. so and since they grow tall at the back I decided to put them all the way at the back so that yeah. I wouldn't have all the red so at least I got some green to complement mm. the overall look itself yeah cool yeah we'll be putting the the species names a little bit here uh, okay. for, for the viewers to know uh, and I see also some moss here uh, as well. Are these weeping moss? Or yeah, this is weeping moss. This is okay. leftover from this that I was doing on the, on the on driftwood. The driftwood. Yeah, okay. because I bought a piece and then after paste, gluing it to the driftwood, I realized I still got a small patch here. Then mm. I'm not sure what to do with it. Decided just to put it and let it grow. And mm. in case in future I still want to use it on some other driftwood, I could still use it. Right. So right. this is more like cultivating it already. Mm -hmm. and, and for the, the rock, is that cereal? Stone yeah, or that's a useful stone. Yeah. stone. And, that, and I presume like it's just all aqua soil. Yeah, just aqua soil. Okay, okay. Any underneath any like power sand or any mm, other no, kind of thing? No, just, just purely aqua the aqua soil, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And because these stem plants don't really need 
root tabs, so I didn't okay, put any root yeah. tabs at all. Yeah. <laughs> Don't need, yeah. Wow, that's cool, yeah. And how long has this been running already? I would say close to a month. Okay, so yeah. it's a relatively new It's a new, relative new. new I, bought, I bought the tank last last month. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually moved some of the furnitures around so that we can put all the tanks on one side and then my products underneath. And mm. so it was all done last month only. I see, I see. Maybe you'll tell us a bit about the equipment that you, that you use to uh, run this. Oh yeah, um, I decided to use a hang-on filter, mm. which maybe some will advise me not to because uh, the... Not as much space for filter media, is it? Or? Because if I put a canister, I will have to run out the tubing all the way right to the end. Oh, so okay, I decided okay. not to, and I don't have a spare canister at the moment. They are mm -hmm. all at my home, which is used by my other tanks. Mm -hmm. So what I have spare was this hang-on filter. Right. And I like Fruval hang-on because they are very efficient. I mean, mm -hmm. they, are, they call it five stages of filtration. Mm. Uh, but so far, I use their product. I, like, I love the product. It's simple mm -hmm. to maintain, clean. And they really does keep my tanks I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, as in water parameters, I check my right. water parameter once in a while. Healthy, yeah. yeah, so they are balanced, so I'm, I'm glad with that. So, mm. but I know that this, I'm, I'm just afraid that this size might be a bit too small for a two feet with mm -hmm. all these fish here. They're actually yeah. pretty, to me, I felt that the fish is a bit overstocked. Mm. I initially have just the beta, some of the rasboras, mm -hmm. and then someone have this post where they have uh, guppies for adoption. So. He told oh, me he got like 30 over guppies. Oh, wow. So if I want, I take it. I say, okay, then you give it to me. I, I'll keep it in the planted tank and see how <laughs> it goes. Mm -hmm. So the 30 over guppies is here. Plus, I recently I saw some guppy fries. So mm. now I got more than 30, I right. believe. Yeah, so I'm afraid that filter may not be good enough. So mm -hmm. I actually ordered a bigger one. So just for standby, in mm. case my water parameters needs a bigger filtration or even mm -hmm. to hang on just to get it running. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I think, but of course, the, having the amount of plants will help. Yeah, and then well. the lights, I decided to get a mm. Chihiro. So, a lot yeah. of people told me it's good. And, it's good, yeah. uh, and you price, use the app as well. To, yeah, to, and they are definitely cheaper than a Fuva mm. light, which I actually have one at home. But mm. yeah, I know the price is expensive. And I like the look. This is the slim one, and mm. I like the slim version look. So, mm. I decided to get this. And it really brings out the colors because they have yeah. a different mode. You can have a yeah. fish mode, a plant mode, mm -hmm. and then you can really see the greatness of the green. So mm -hmm. it plays with the colors and I like the look and it really does give the plants. You know, if my plants are still growing, I need to trim every week uh, and it shows me the light is really doing its job as well. That's true. Yeah, compared to, I do have lights I bought from you know, Taobao, mm -hmm. the China lights, all these. So they are purely just white lights, so mm -hmm. white and blue. So the, ch the difference is really there. So I really mm -hmm. believe that if you really want to have a good uh, Tank with the yeah. plants growing, light is also an important factor definitely. as well. Yeah. Definitely. And you have, of course, uh, CO2 injection running as well. Yes, uh, definitely. Right? You yes. See that. And uh, okay, yeah, that's cool. And and maintenance, like what's roughly your maintenance well, regime? For me, for it's this? always a uh, water change once a week without mm -hmm. fuel. Even just the fish alone, we'll do the mm. water change once a how, week. Uh, how much water? Uh, now, I, initially, I started with like maybe a quarter, but this, mm. this few weeks, uh, or at least the last couple of weeks, I started doing 50% already because mm -hmm. of the fish stock inside. I felt that I should do at least 50%. Mm -hmm. So at least I can remove the whatever I need yeah. to remove. Uh, if if not enough food, I can still dose back the, the food, but just mm. want to keep the water clean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that at least keep everything constant and then get rid of the algae and then see what happens and let it become a balance. Thing. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. I think uh, that's all the time we have, but mm. really appreciate you sharing about your, yeah. your tank and your journey as well. No worry. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like, share and subscribe. Also let us know in the comments down below if there's any type of content that you want to see because we just really want to put out content that matters to you. See you guys.